About a year and a half ago, I decided that I wanted to start the biggest art project of my life, right at the end of my senior year in high school. So I ordered a massive roll of paper online made of 100% cotton, and it was quite textured, which I would later discover was a big mistake. It was originally a present for my mom's birthday at the end of May. Spoiler alert, I did not finish it by then. The image I chose to draw was a close-up of two peonies that I found on Pinterest and edited black and white. One of the flowers were quite blurry and the sharp one didn't have nearly as much detail as I would have liked, but I rolled with it and decided to fill in the blanks with my imagination. The first step was to measure the painting and the picture and make sure the proportions were right. Sketching in pencil alone took me three hours because I kept checking with my ruler and calculator that everything was proportional. Finally, I could start inking. I wanted to fill out this entire piece using fine liners and black ink. And as you can imagine, repeatedly swiping the thin tip of a fine liner over this roughly textured paper didn't bode well for the lifespan of my pens. I started inking in the area that I was most in doubt about, the center of the flower. I couldn't really tell from the picture what was in the center of a peony, so through various Google searches, this was what I came up with. I'm pretty happy with how it looks, even though it's probably not very accurate. This little section did take forever though. Every part was shaded and colored using tiny strokes. Plus, I didn't really have a clue what I was doing. I know it's been a while since my last upload, and honestly, my life has just been crazy the last few months. Almost immediately after returning from my four month long travel, I went on another two vacations, first with my family, and then interrail with some friends. The day I got back from Interrail, I had a job interview for a place I've been wanting to work at for over a year. And in the following days, I moved out of my parents' house and into an apartment in the city. Then I started school and found out I had gotten the job, so all of a sudden I had to navigate two new social circles and figure out how to live away from home. But I am slowly getting into a routine, and I find myself more excited than ever to do art and make stuff. My drawing setup the first many months of working on this piece was not very sustainable. I had just taped it to the floor and would spend hours lying on my belly or sitting on my knees drawing, and weirdly enough, everything would hurt. But because I'm really lazy and figuring out a better solution was way too much work, I just left it there and repeatedly tortured my knees and elbows. When you look at this time lapse, you might be thinking that inking this entire piece of paper with fine liners must be one of the most tedious tasks in the world and you would be right. This whole process was extremely repetitive, and the only times I got a break from that same hand movement was when I busted out my bottle of India ink and painted over the slightly larger black areas. But I'm just the type of weirdo who loves repetitive, tedious tasks that seem like they have no end. So this is the progress so far. I think I've spent about 15 hours on this part, and I'm probably about a fifth of the way. So there's definitely a, a long way to go, but I'm going to try to get some hours in today and hopefully get something done. It's really weird looking back at this footage from when I was still in high school. I remember having all these concerns and everything feeling so serious and final. For the first time since I was thrown into the school system at five years old, I was about to be actually free to make my own choices and decide what I was going to spend the rest of my life doing. And it was terrifying. I had no clue what I wanted to do, and thank god it's very normal here to take a gap year, because I spent an entire year deciding what my plans were. For me the problem wasn't that nothing seemed interesting, it was that everything seemed interesting. All through high school I was intent on studying psychology, and after starting this channel, I got more and more into filmmaking and photography. Music and art were also serious considerations, but ultimately I didn't feel like I could justify pursuing one thing when I was equally as invested in the others. I didn't feel like I loved any of it enough to stash away my high school diploma and become an artist. So I made the decision to pursue medicine instead. I really love school and learning about people and anatomy, so I don't think I'll ever get bored with it. My hope is to still be able to keep up my hobbies and have that be enough, but honestly, I have no idea. At least for now, that's what I'm planning, but who knows if that's still what I want in a year. Wow, this is getting to be very personal, and literally none of you asked for this. I'm sorry. <laughs> it 
It's been about three months since I worked on this painting. I don't really know why I stopped, I just... We had to move it from the floor in the living room because my mom got tired of looking at it. And then I just had it stashed away somewhere and I never really got to working on it. So I have two months left to finish it now. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't finish in two months. But I did put in a lot of hours here in the basement of my parents' house. This time I propped it up against a wall, which was slightly better, but I still had to sit on the concrete floor. At this point, I think I had worked on the painting for about 30 hours in total, but I was working at a school during the day, so I had very few daylight hours to film in. I think these two months before leaving for Asia were the toughest of this year. I was working as a substitute teacher and hating it. I'd worked there since September with my best friend, but she quit around Christmas, so I was pretty miserable. It wasn't so much the kids, I actually love kids. It was more the school and the work environment that just killed me slowly. But I had to save up in order to go to Asia, so quitting wasn't really an option either. I just remember the dread of waking up at 6.30am to find out that I had classes at 8am until late afternoon, or them calling me at 7.30 when I thought I was off the hook for the day, and then asking me to get there as quickly as possible. I found out that planning is really important to me, and having no idea how many hours I was going to be working before the same morning was horrible. Also when thinking back on it, I had way too much responsibility for an 18 year old. I was left alone to teach a class of 5 year olds for over a month, handling everything from parents to them peeing themselves. Later I was given the responsibility of teaching an 8th and a 7th grade math for two months? Like, how was I qualified for that? <laughs> they were like four years younger than me. Anyway, I'm glad I'm not in that position anymore, and taking a four month break from life was the best possible thing I could have done for myself. I took a really long break with painting, obviously, while I was traveling, but also over the entire summer. It wasn't until I had gotten settled in my new apartment that I started again. This time at an actual table. At this point, my mom had been waiting for her painting for more than a year, and I just really wanted it finished. And yes, filling the black background was just as satisfying as you think it was. I actually had to go over the black areas several times to get the desired darkness, but around this time I started to see a lot of progress. I painted non-stop for weeks in all my spare time, which wasn't a lot because I was basically working evenings almost full-time while studying during the day. I've been debating with myself whether or not to make an apartment tour video slash apartment decoration video. I've been living here for three months now and it's nowhere near finished. But I probably won't feel like it's done for a long time, so yeah, let me know if that's something you would like to see. I always find it fascinating to see how other people live, but maybe that's just me. In fact, if you have any holiday themed videos you would like to see, please let me know in the comments down below. I've done a few holiday DIYs in the previous years, but I also feel like every single YouTuber with the slightest element of crafting to their channel is gonna do this. Maybe I'll do more of a vlog type situation showing you the presents I'm making for my family this year. I love making presents myself, it's just so much more personal. As long as it's something people actually want, of course. I'm not gonna start knitting a sweater for my 17 year old brother. Okay, I feel like I'm going off on a tangent here. <laughs> I hope you didn't find this video too long. I know it's been longer than those 30 second time lapse videos you see on Instagram. Finally, the last corner. I saved the easiest part for last, of course. 
and it was so perfect because my mom had just come over to pick me up, so she watched for the last 15 minutes as I finished the drawing. She wanted to have it professionally framed, which is super cool, but we did have to wait almost three weeks before we could bring it home. I can't believe I actually did it. So I finally finished my painting and thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. It's been a long one, um, not for you, but for me it has taken a year and a half. Um, but I'm so glad that I did it and I'm really stoked about the finished piece. I really enjoyed this process and I guess it just goes to show that you don't have to be really good at acrylics or oils to make large scale paintings. I've never done anything of this scale before and I think it's been really, really cool um, and I'm definitely going to make more like this, I think. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please leave a comment down below and otherwise I'll see you in my next video. Bye!